In 2005, a Birmingham primary took a group of pupils on a walkabout of the city centre. As school trips go, it was fairly uneventful, but it had a dramatic effect on the future of the school. I took them into Birmingham to study sculpture and architecture, and 50% uh, of the children that I took on the bus had never actually been into Birmingham. That's four miles away. Yeah, and it quite amazed me the kind of insular world that my children lived in. And even though we live in a multicultural city, my children seem to have no kind of knowledge of that city at all. The realisation that so many children had no idea of the world outside their neighbourhood was a catalyst for major change, with the introduction of a new curriculum at the Warren Farm Primary in the King Standing area of Birmingham. And according to the school, the change is responsible for lifting the gloom of low aspiration and underachievement hanging over the school and the entire area. It's an area where one in six adults is unemployed and claiming benefit, and where the deprivation index is more than 98%. Little wonder that education wasn't seen as important or relevant. Attitudes that have now been successfully challenged. <laughs> At Warren Farm, non-attendance has been replaced by enthusiasm, indifference by keenness, and failure by success. The school, once in the lowest quarter, is now in the top 20% of all primaries. At our school, the children are from third generation unemployed. And if the children are motivated and inspired at home, then it's our job to do that. And we want to make our children highly motivated to want to go on and know what they want to do in the future. It's also about them knowing that they are part of a wider world with wider world issues. The school adopted the International Primary Curriculum, or IPC which takes a cross-curricular, thematic approach to teaching for all years. Even the nursery children. The children's activities currently revolve around the theme of transport. We've just been doing lots of different activities, showing the children all the different forms of transport and all the different places we can go to. Each time we have a topic, we do actually try and make everything fit in with what we're doing, so number work will be about looking at cars and counting how many wheels. So they're not yeah. too young to be part of the IPC? No, 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 we love it, yeah. In fact, really, it's like going back to the old times in a way, we used to always do topic work. The emphasis throughout is on making and doing and going. Pupils are taken on outings at least once a term, and they're all given the opportunity to stay in the middle of the countryside and near the seaside. Often, it's the first time they've seen a farm or the sea. This was the only class we saw where the children were sitting down. It's a reception class, and the lesson is aimed at improving language skills. Where else could I put my teddy? Brianna. Behind his house. Behind, I'm going to put my teddy. Behind his house. We've just found from assessment that when they do start school, a lot of children find it quite hard to speak in proper sentences. So this isn't part of the international primary curriculum as such? Not as such, but obviously language is vital for everything, so it's really important in reception and in nursery that we do everything we can to help the children's language de skills develop. So it's, it's important for everything, really. Apart from these more formal lessons, all the teaching involves themes or units of work, lasting between four and 12 weeks. This class, mostly year one pupils, is reaching the end of their current unit. Make sure they're nice and close to each other, right next to it, right next to it. Good boy, that's it. What are you making? Um, uh, a dough. Who lives in those? Whereabouts? Um, South America. South America. South America. Okay. And what's it made out of? Sand. 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 It's clay bricks. Oh right. Do you like getting messy? No. No. 
I love getting messy. The children love getting messy. Well, most of them, anyway. Most of them, yeah. And it's all part of the fun of the IPC units. The cross-curricular links that I can get in are fantastic. I can get literacy out of this because that will be the next part of this project will be for them to write instructions as to how they have done this. Um, I don't know if you heard the language that was going over there about the maths. They need to cut the lollipop sticks in half. What's a half? You know, so we're actually bringing in all areas of the curriculum into this themed approach so that you're fulfilling the skills that the children need to build upon as they go further up the school. The IPC was originally developed in 1999 for overseas schools used by children whose parents worked for the Shell Oil Company. This year three classroom is empty because a dinosaur making workshop is getting underway for both the pupils and their parents or grandparents who are encouraged to get involved like this with every unit. Are things a bit different to when you were in primary school? A lot different. We didn't do this, we were behind a desk wasn't we? They have lots more fun nowadays don't they? What's the best way of learning do you think? Doing this sort of thing or sitting hands, behind a desk? Hands off. By 2009, the IPC was being used in more than 400 British primaries. They paid £10,000 over three years, plus an annual membership fee of £1,000. So do you feel that you're breaking the spiral of low aspiration in this area? Oh, very much so, very much so. I mean, we have um, workshops now for parents, 90 seven ninety eight percent turnout and now a lot of my parents now go on from working in schools and working with their children going on to do further education um, for themselves IPC organizers provide support for teachers delivering the curriculum schools are also advised to appoint their own coordinators at Warren Farm a year two teacher shares the coordination role with a year five teacher as they explain, the curriculum is split into three mileposts, one for every two years of teaching. Each milepost is split up into 12 units, for example, circuses, flowers and insects, food, chocolate. Well, each unit has an entry point where the children are either taken on a trip or they might turn the classroom into another country or anything to allow the children to experience what they're going to be learning about. So say the topic was, I don't know, chocolate, what would be the entry point? Uh, the children who do chocolate go to Cadbury World and they also have the day where they'll turn the classroom into a chocolate factory. Space, where would they go? Uh, National Space Centre in Leicester and we also have someone come in and teach them how to make paper rockets and actually launch them in the playground. The National Curriculum sets guidelines where we have to do so many hours of the different subject areas and we've had to make sure that we are covering that. You're doing flowers and insects. Tell me how history comes into that unit. It doesn't in this one and that's why we've had to look very carefully at each of the units and make sure that my other two um, units of work for this year have heavily had history within it. The knowledge harvest we will do at the beginning of each unit. It's the next step after the entry point. We'll use mind mapping with the children for them to share their thoughts so as teachers we can find out exactly what they know about the topic. At the end of each unit there'll be an exit point where the children will add in a different colour to their original mind map. Therefore they can see the progress that they've made and the new things that they've learned and the skills that they've gained. Do you ever get parents saying to you, why are my children taught like this? Never. Back at the workshop, the dinosaurs are taking shape. Three generations of Warren Farm pupils can be found in here. What's it like having your nan here? Great. My family have all come here. Um, I've come here. My, my mother came here. So you were sitting behind a desk, was you? Yes, the old school type. So you don't feel that children should be taught like you were? Um, I think a bit of both wouldn't hurt. You didn't do projects when you were in school? No, 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 no projects. Just English, maths, science, that was it. <laughs> but I wasn't very good. <laughs> I mean, at eight years old, I, did, I didn't know anything about dinosaurs and the names. And, but I mean, she comes home and she tells me loads about dinosaurs and where they used to live. Well, I'm off on the sick at the moment. I broke my ribs, so... Oh, right, that's convenient. So it was, it was convenient for him, actually. <laughs> Is he good at making dinosaurs? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Dainty? Yeah. Okay. Do you think parents should be getting involved in coming into school and things like that? Or should be left to teachers? No, it should be parents. Because they can take a follow it on back at home then, can't they? 
The IPC's international component can be seen in the whole world issues examined in the classroom. Both Year 5 classes are working on an environmental unit and both using the power of television. We have stopped this programme for a really important news flash about the environment. If we don't start recycling, we can say goodbye to our lives once and for all. Why is everyone wearing green today? Because cause it's green day. What does that mean? It means that we have to wear green. We want to learn about the environment more because it, it's helping us and it's help, helping our community stop throwing rubbish on the floor and cans. Action. Hello, my name is Chloe Smith and you're watching Green Noises. Now I'm here with, with an expert on the environment. Hello, Ahmed. Hello, Chloe. So can you tell me how, how much rubbish gets thrown away a year? Every year, an average person throws away their own body weight of rubbish. Don't you wish you were sitting behind a desk, just listening to the teacher? No. <laughs> have you ever done that? Sometimes, but mostly we have a lot of fun. You're not at school for fun. You're supposed to learn. We do learn as we have fun. <laughs> And this is my box. It's child friendly, it's made out of plastic material and it's made out of cardboard box as well. We're doing like writing down what we could do to save the earth and we said if we um, work together to make this new magic food for the cows uh, to stop them producing methane then um, it will be a better place. I'm a drama specialist so I prefer to do things through acting, through role play, getting up and moving. I can't learn from sitting and looking at a book. Funnily enough my dissertation was on uh, thematic teaching and teaching through topics so it did fit quite well when I did find this school and I enjoy it and because I enjoy it the children enjoy it more I think. So you don't feel that you want to have a go at teaching in a more traditional manner? No I think I'd be bored and sit with the kids. <laughs> the parents have gone leaving behind their joint Jurassic Park and the class teacher an NQT from a more recent era who applied to work at the school because of the curriculum. Well, we've been studying dinosaurs for the past term um, and the children have really enjoyed it so much. And with our curriculum, we do have objectives that we have to teach. You know, we've taught the children all about the job of a paleontologist and we've practised doing a dinosaur dig and digging up the bones and putting dinosaur bones together. Um, and some of the children asked me if they could create their own dinosaur. But the subject-based education has been going for hundreds of years, yeah. so shouldn't you stick with something that's tried and tested? No, if you just stick with the same thing, you can't ever improve. So, no, I think you should um, experiment and try new things. With my children, it's about making the learning relevant and making it exciting for children, hands-on, and creating things for themselves to build their independence. Education's more than just knowledge and, and, and skills. It's about emotional literacy, it's about thinking about others, it's about building respect, it's about moral values. And we pride ourselves here on being a school that teaches those values and we look at the curriculum to vehicle those values. <laughs>